Cream. Well, with all that's happening on Capitol Hill right now, you may have missed this. Some U.S. representatives introduced a new act this week. They say will protect renters, and the goal here is to expand rights when it comes to unfair housing practices, evictions, housing discrimination, and the price hikes we've been seeing across the board. Joining us now is one of the sponsors of that bill, Illinois Congresswoman Delia Ramirez. Congresswoman, good morning and thanks for being here. Good morning, Adrina. Thanks for having me. Yeah, glad to talk about this. The Tenants Right to Organize Act, that's the official name. Can you tell us who exactly this would help and then what type of protections are we talking about here for renters? Yeah, I mean, you're seeing this across the country. The affordability is actually becoming non-existent in many cases. And while we need to build more affordable housing, we have to preserve and protect renters right now who already live in affordable housing. This bill, what it will do is it will protect the rights to organize for housing choice voucher holders, so people who are living in already in subsidized housing through housing vouchers, but also the people that are living in what we call the low income tax credit program. So there's a number of thousands of people in the state of Illinois, particularly in the city of Chicago, who live in these low income housing trust fund units that landlords get subsidy for. But right now they don't have the protections in the way that other renters do. This bill will give them that. And then I think the third party, the third group, is mixed status families. Families who the mother might be undocumented, but the children are not. And right now they're not eligible for some of these subsidy programs. It will also expand protections so they can organize and hopefully be able to ensure that, you know, housing conditions and other issues that we're seeing across the country, um, that there are addressed and the tenants are able to organize around it. I talked to a family recently, they live in subsidized housing and their front stairs are crumbling. So you talk about the conditions and that landlords are getting subsidies, but we're seeing properties that are just dealing with some really bad issues and it's safety issues sometimes. So how do we hold landlords accountable and how could this help with that? That's exactly what I'm talking about. I think there's this assumption, well, you're getting a subsidy, you should just be grateful that you're here attitude, which already tells you that in many cases, people think that housing is a luxury. This will allow tenants to be able to organize, to be able to address this, certainly with the, the housing authority, but more importantly, to be able to organize together to ensure that they're able to one, stay there, but more importantly, that they have the quality protective um, conditions in their homes so that if they have to fix those stairs that they have all the rights and resources to work with other organizations to make sure that the conditions of the housing are high quality as you would expect in any other housing. Here's another example. People in West Chicago, I represent the third congressional district that goes all the way, all the way to West Chicago. We have a lot of affordable units, you would say. They're a little below market. They're not subsidized, but many immigrant families live there. The children were born here, the parents weren't. They are living in those crumbling stair conditions right now. And the landlord tells them, if you report me, if you organize, I'm going to call ICE on you. People are living in fear. This legislation will allow them to be able to organize in ways that they have not been able to know where inspectors don't usually go to these kind of units and be able to ensure they also have the adequate working conditions for the units that they're paying rent into. Yeah, I think that's a big point. I mean, they are paying and this is just, it's so, so sad to see some of this happening uh, to families. Let's talk about here in Chicago. We have several ho housing crises happening. Of course, we've always dealt with homelessness, but we have income-based housing, not enough of it. And now we're struggling to find home for migrants. Does this bill at all address that here? I know we have a lot coming down the pike as far as, you know, in, not enough resources and how do we address these issues? Well, look, yes, it will actually. As a matter of fact, a number of people who came to the city of Chicago are no, living, no longer living in shelters. They're renting housing. Mm -hmm. They're renting somewhere in Chicago. They might be in the surrounding suburbs. This will give them protection that as they're paying rent, they're not having to, you know, live in absolutely horrible work uh, living conditions just so that they can have a roof over their head. They'll also have the ability to organize the, to ensure that if they're living in this unit, they have the protections necessary. But also I would say to you that as the city is resettling people into permanent housing and partnering with some landlords to do that through subsidies, these protections will also be extended. I will say to you though, this is going to support everyone, but particularly those that have been living in the city of Chicago in these units for such a long time that often feel like I get no protection. I'm at the brink of losing my apartment. And if I do, I will end up in the street and experiencing homelessness. All right, I wish we had more time to talk about the processes that you're talking about and all the steps that would need to be taken, but we can get to more on that maybe later on down the line. Thank you so much, Congresswoman Delia Ramirez, representing Illinois District 3. We appreciate your time.
Thank you for having me.